original address into internal buffer. As the second step, after saving the byte and the address, the debugger replaces the original byte, the first one byte, the starting byte, not inside the instruction. The starting byte of the instruction is overwrited with this one byte, CC. As a third step, the debugger at this second point, as the second uh, step is finished, the soft, uh, software breakpoint is completed, is uh, set into program, and debugger just need to wait until the, this breakpoint triggers. So this is the first step. Debugger waits, wait for debug event under Windows or Ptrace uh, or sys wait for under Linux. The third step. The fourth step. Uh, the interrupt free uh, uh, handler is triggered and this interrupt free handler uh, gets the address not this, this address but one byte after this address because the interrupt free is the trap type trap type of exception so it is triggered after this instruction is executed so the interrupt free handler gets address one byte after the starting address of instruction. So uh, the debugger subtracts one from this address and it gets address X. This address X is the starting address of the instruction CC. The instruction is reported after debugger sub subtract one and get the start address of this instruction. Yeah? And then as the sixth step, debugger checks its internal buffer whether this address X is stored and matches. If no, su if no such address found, so it is not breakpoint put into program by debugger. It is breakpoint incompiled in the program. <coughs> it is this second choice. If such address in internal buffers are found, it means that it was software breakpoint put into program by debugger, by these two steps. And in this case, Eight. Is if such address found, it was our breakpoint put in into program by debugger. In this case, the debugger must restore the original the original byte which is saved at the address X. X it replaces the original byte back. This one dis disappears and is overwritten with original. Okay? It's it restores the original byte at address X. And then it decreases the instruction pointer in the program. Because after triggering interrupt free, the instruction pointer is increased. It's one byte after. It's after this. And after subtracting one, the instruction pointer is pointed at the start address of the instruction. And this is everything what debugger has to do when it needs to handle software breakpoint. At this point, everything is restored. Uh, there are other features uh, in debugging which are not very much known. Uh, no, uh, much people knows about them. And uh, this is that we can watch addresses causing control transfers. Everybody knows that uh, that is uh, very difficult to trace back the error. Yeah? Tracing forward is extremely easy, stepping and so on. But uh, what happens before the exception? How to know the addresses before? We could jump in he here from this, 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 from several points. Yeah? And this feature helps 
to record the last branches. Changing of instruction pointer. Yeah, there are traces back what happened before the exception. And the CPU records this instruction. Jumps, calls, returns, conditional jumps, jump if uh, CX is zero, loops, far jumps, far calls, return for fars, interrupts, exceptions, returns from interrupts, system calls, system returns, non cable interrupts, system management interrupts, resuming from system management. We just need to enable one bit in one register. But uh, I suppose that uh, nor Windows nor Linux uh, has this one bit You enabled. can do it if you do your driver work, and it can be very, very yeah. useful if you're dealing with unpacking programs, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Uh, so the name of this register is debug control MSR. And the value is uh, the same in Intel and in AMD, they made perhaps agreement not to make references. So this is the sample how to read, how to set, okay, how to set this one bit in this control register. We put this value into ACE, ACX, we executed read machine status register, we turn on bit zero and we write it into this control register back. This uh, sample enables this bit zero. Uh, we can enable bit one, and it is the complication of, of simple stepping, which I uh, told you about. That single stepping mm, can be mm, much more difficult, not exactly only single step. So uh, we have two bits to set, to make a life complicated. Uh, setting this bit zero orders the processor to start to record the addresses of branches, jumps, returns, calls, and, and so on, taken before the debug exception occurs. So recording traces back what happens before exception. Uh, the, com the processor automatically disables. This is the same like uh, when I told you about single steppings of uh, disabling the track flag bit. The processor disables the control transfer recording when, a, uh, when interrupt one occurs and it prevents the instruction inside interrupt one handler to overwrite these records in these machine status registers. And before exciting the debug exception handler, software can set this bit to one to re-enable the recording mechanism. So after enabling this bit zero of, the, of this control register, the source and destination addresses of control transfer events before the control is given to interrupt one are saved by the processor branches, interrupts, exceptions. And we have four registers, four records, what happened before the interrupt one. These are uh, 64 bits read-only registers. And here we are then, these four. Here, uh, please, uh, <laughs> everything is written. This is the sample how to read the last branch, last branch from IP register. This one. We load ACX with this value and then we execute read machine status register. And then we can say ADX is the high double word and EAX is the low double word. Because the address is 46 bits and half, and the higher half is recorded in uh, e that edx, and the low double word is in eax, okay. and put together the address is 46 bits. Uh, the 
beat. One. This one. When we enable it, then we change the behavior of single stepping. The normal behavior is that single steps occurs on every instruction. But when we set this beat, then the single stepping changes. It doesn't occur on every instruction, but only on branches. So we can make bigger single steps, not small, or bigger, only to branches. I uh, didn't saw this in any debugger. It requires in kernel mode to enable this one bit. I didn't, I didn't see it in any debugger, nor in Windows, nor I, neither in Linux. But it is possible to do it. Perhaps we can make our own kernel. kernel. I've, I've seen it on all Windows, but it re requires a driver. Oh. It was used for some automatic oh. unpacking. Oh. We can write drivers in. Yeah. Uh, so, this is, yeah. and now uh, we are finishing the theoretical, mm, we don't have 46 uh, bit machine uh, to show you mm, my debugger in uh, the work, but uh, the debuggers, the, the, the my, my debugger su supports symbols. What does it mean symbol? Uh, if we load uh, executable into debugger, uh, we see a lot of hexadecimal numbers, addresses, and so on, and so on. And the symbols are helpers, helpers, helpers to, tra uh, to translate the hexadecimal address into label. This address is in memory when the program executes, and this label, this is some text in your source of program. Uh, this kind of, uh, this type of symbols are supported in my debugger. Under Linux, uh, it is uh, the debug with arbitrary record format, which is supported. And under Windows, uh, there are uh, two uh, there are uh, two ways uh, how to obtain symbols. One is thanks to this BLL, but this is not uh, very suitable for us as let assemble programmers. It is suitable for programmers in C. Uh, and I discovered that uh, we can easily make uh, uh, labels under Windows by making exports in executable. It is the same way as DLLs. Yeah? And after this, uh, we can make symbols very easily under FDBJ. Uh, 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 summarization about breakpoints. Breakpoint must lie on the starting of the instruction. Breakpoint mustn't lie inside the instruction. We have two types of breakpoints. Software breakpoints by overwriting one byte in memory with this byte. It has the disadvantage that it modifies memory's program program as an executable could easily detect this breakpoint by simple calculating self, self CRC and if somebody is overwriting with this one the CRC is incorrect. And in this case we can use hardware breakpoints because hardware breakpoints doesn't modify memory and if we use hardware breakpoints we can get correct CRC of the program because no one byte of memory is modified. Uh, but the uh, uh, disadvantage is that we have only four hardware breakpoints. Only four. And these software breakpoints, they are limited only with size of, of memory. We can increase buffers and to have software breakpoints several millions. Okay? And the advantage of hardware breakpoints is that we can watch reading or writing into memory or in kernel into ports as, you, as I showed you. It is not possible by software breakpoints. They triggers only on instruction execution. Hardware breakpoints may be triggered by accessing memory or ports. Mm, I have uh, some samples 
uh, included in my debugger uh, where you can uh, use hardware breakpoint uh, to watching to watching the first word of kernel uh, free to DLL uh, because viruses uh, likes uh, to access this uh, start of kernel uh, 32 uh, this uh, signature MZ and after accessing this uh, start the viruses can uh, look for making imports from kernel DLL yeah. and viruses often accesses this beginning of the of this DLL so we just uh, prepare hardware breakpoint watching this signature MZ and after program accessing is accessing it it is almost some virus trying to do ugly jobs without input without memory and a normal system run does never access that address On, only viruses access that address almost viruses i prepared some sample there it is not virus it is only the concept how to viruses uh, some compressors and software protection do as well but it's a to me. Yes, a normal well, system runs it doesn't access that. I haven't seen anything uh, normal do it, but, but some uh, compressors. If some of your programs accesses the signature word MZ at the be beginning of kernel DLL, you have to worry without whether it is not virus. Yes. But the sample included in the debugger isn't virus, it is only. Uh, Yes. Sample how, how viruses behave without import. Summarization about steppings. Uh, we have uh, two possibilities how to uh, how to do steps. The smallest one is trace in two. It is by setting the trap flag bit of trap of flag registers. It is the smallest possible step. The smallest. The, and then we can make uh, bigger steps uh, with the name steps over it is in uh, my debugger by pressing F7 and this is uh, by pressing F8 just like in old turbo debugger this uh, step over behaves uh, as this smallest step but in these three cases it behaves in an other way when you uh, uh, execute step over on these instructions then step over puts software breakpoint after and allows the whole cycle to complete the repeating string operation the calls or the loops and when you execute trace into at these instructions you will have to do trace into several times until the whole repeating string operation or the, the procedure of the loop completes. Yeah. You have se some samples included in the debugger when you can watch differences between these two steps. And th there is the third step, but this is not use, uh, used in my debugger by setting this one within one control mm -hmm. register. Yeah, this is not used in my debugger, but... Mm -hmm. That's a question. Uh, <coughs> Loco is asking, how can you detect if your processor supports the only uh, break on branches feature? I think it was introduced in early yeah, this is, machines, uh, but is there a way to detect the presence of it? Or yeah, I, I, I'm not sure now, but I suppose that uh, CPU it uh, uh, yeah. could be used uh, to obtain this information, but I am not sure. Really. But this feature uh, uh, is uh, included uh, several years into manuals. Yeah. This is not, not news, it is an old information, but uh, this type isn't very much used and is perhaps forgotten. Uh, we will finish. Uh, there are two groups of SMI programmers who really need uh, debug debugging. The first 
are programmers doing big, boring, exhaustive job. And this is the reason of doing a lot of mistakes. The second type of programmers who really need a lot of debugging, these are programmers doing a lot of mistakes because they just started to learn assembly. I tried to do debugger as easy as possible to help beginners. And, but the improvement of beginners is rapidly increasing thanks to debugging. Uh, this is the specimen sample of the first type of programmers. He's doing very big project and he's boring. He, he, do, he does a lot of mistakes because he's exhausted. This is he. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the second type of programmers. The beginner uh, just started to learn assembly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you.